Lingering Shadow. Stepping into new territory, a new mech marches fearlessly. With a seemingly limitless arsenal at its disposal, foes must stay on high alert to stand even a chance against this mecha. Basic Combat Gorilla Hunter's primary is a heavy rifle with a slightly lower fire rate. Its high capacity and reliable firepower work in tandem for deadly effects, wearing down mid-range enemies with ease. Ambush your enemies with Detection Crossbow. Hold the secondary button to ready the crossbow, then release to fire an explosive arrow, detonating on impact in a small area. At the same time, a recon sphere is released, scanning the surrounding area. I'll be referring to the projectile as an explosive arrow and recon bolt interchangeably. The recon bolt scans through walls to reveal enemy positions. Enemies marked by the scan are highlighted in red for a set duration of about 5 seconds. Five seconds after the initial scan, a secondary scan is released. Gorilla's Recon Bolt follows the same trajectory logic as Andromeda's Javelin, so it can get cut on obstacles if you're not careful. Press the core button to switch to the Firestorm Shotgun, a pump-action shotgun dealing heavy damage. Due to the large recovery time in between shots, it's best used for opening shots and pop shots up close. The shotgun reloads one shell at a time, so the more you fire, the longer the reload time. Press the core button again to switch back to the rifle. His jump is a weighty normal jump. Since his jump floats a lot less, he can make it up steps more smoothly. Divide and conquer with warping projection. Press the tactical button to send out a hologram of Gorilla in front of you. The clone is indestructible, but stops from reaching an object you can't scale. While the tactical gauge is active, press the tactical button to teleport instantly to your clone's location. You'll stay facing the direction you were looking in before you teleported, so keep this in mind as you plan your next move. A teleportation effect is displayed when you teleport, which can be seen by enemies. And when the enemy shoots your clone, the clone becomes transparent and breaks apart momentarily, letting enemies know the real gorilla is somewhere close by. Compared to the real gorilla hunter, your clone walks about 10% faster, so if you're trying to get somewhere fast, you usually want to let your clone do the walking for you. Modules the Professional Tools module buffs rifle damage by 10% on targets beyond 50 meters. Shotgun damage is increased by 10% within 50 meters. When holstering your primary for a set time, auto-reloading holster activates, automatically reloading your holstered weapon. This works for both the rifle and the shotgun. Single bolt lengthens the mark duration applied by the recon bolt or your clone. Since the mark duration is respectable at base, the 1 second benefit is pretty negligible. Although in TDM, a near-constant buff with Core 1 can be decent. This module is a safe choice until you master your crossbow, weakening your enemies with lacerating bolts. Successful hits with your secondary applies moderate tick damage over 4 seconds. On top of the heavy damage the crossbow already deals, a blow from this weapon could put even healthy enemies on the back foot. Siphon Bolt increases movement speed on a successful secondary hit. The speed buff is only noticeable when running freely, and even then, it's not that great. If it's updated to increase speed by 50%, it could be worth using at that point. Coolant Tech reduces the cooldown for your clone. When an enemy shoots your clone, Hunting Mark activates, marking the enemy for 5 seconds. Due to Hunting Mark's effect, Gorilla Hunter deals 10% additional damage to marked enemies, including enemies marked by your Recon Bolt. And since there's damage falloff across both primaries, this helps offset that to deal full damage at range. 
Hunting Mark is best for controlling one point strongly at a time, increasing overall effective range and DPS. Hunt in Shadow is where things really get interesting. When you teleport to your clone, your clone will now switch places with you, standing in place where you last teleported from. While the tactical gauge is active, you can teleport to your clone a second time. Core 1 passively increases damage, Core 2 provides greater versatility and extended opportunities to attack. The ability to teleport in and out of danger almost recklessly can be very powerful. Normally dangerous teleports can be challenged. There are several applications of this ability depending on the situation, so I'll let some of the gameplay throughout the video give you a few pointers as to how it can take your guerrilla gameplay to the next level. In a nutshell, you can go with Core 1 if you want better damage and effective range, or pick Core 2 for greatly expanded tactical plays and survivability. Core 2 offers greater self-sufficiency, so that's the module I prefer to run in most cases. Module Builds For the control build, I run Professional Tools, Lacerating Bolt, and Coolant Tank. The 10% damage buff from Professional Tools is difficult to pass up. While auto-loading holster sounds good in theory, reload switching is much faster. For those of you new to reload switching, I'll cover how to perform this technique later in the video. Lacerating Bolt is the obvious choice for defense modules. Providing you can land your shots, the insane damage buff is yours. We run Coolant Tank for the shift skill cooldown reduction, massively extending your options and alleviating Gorilla's otherwise low mobility. For TDM, Signal Bolt is decent with Core 1. Getting sightlines on enemies is so much easier when battles are confined to a smaller area. In those situations, you can more consistently scan enemies to take advantage of the Core 1 damage buff. Tech Builds the Trinity build offers a healthy amount of fire rate and accuracy, giving Gorilla strong DPS, zoning, and pallet finishing potential, with minor buffs to secondary recovery and close range damage. Quick cooldown plan is a must have for Gorilla, giving huge cooldown reductions for your tactical skill and secondary. We run Augment Shield for the 4.6% increase to shields. And lastly, Improved Full Tank allows you to use your jumps more freely to avoid damage. Nice to have when your clone is on cooldown. For the Vampiric build, we switch in first response unit and self-healing liner. These modules can make the difference when it comes down to the wire. During downtimes, double tagging life drain allows for a respectable amount of life drain off of bots and even objects like unicorns. Life saving in matches scarce of recovery items. The life drain adds up quickly in stamina fights, making it pretty hard to clear with a good positioning and clone usage. Mega skills. Hive infrastructure is a safe pick if you haven't found your playstyle of Gorilla just yet. With more HP to play with, you can survive for longer while mastering the teleport. Gravity Amplifier converts 10% of Gorilla's durability into shields, for a beefy total of 950 shields. And since Gorilla's shield recovers quickly, this is one of the stronger picks available. Common Control goes pretty hard. With a largely reduced cooldown, you're freer to set up additional plays. And just as important, minimize time spent vulnerable in between teleports. Although it's only half as strong, Combat Control can be a strong enough replacement for Coolant Tank. The cooldown reduction with Coolant Tank is usually good enough by itself, though you can run Combat Control as a backup in a pinch. Chain Electroshock is strongest for crossbow to shotgun combos. A basic combo is to open up with a recon bolt, teleport close to a target, and then combo into a buffed shotgun shot. Hovering attack is good for pop shots and close-up brawls. Gorilla's fuel recovery cooldown is pretty fast, making it strong in TDM. While Gorilla's shield recharge is pretty fast, the shield capacity is pretty large, so recovering the full takes a bit to cap out. With Quick Shield Recharge, you can recover shields quickly. This allows you to TP up to enemies with full shields before their own shields are recovered. Since having fuel helps reduce damage, having 20% extra fuel is pretty handy. Firing any of your attacks from above helps you land shots more consistently. This is especially so for the Recon Pulse, so it helps with damage consistency also. Purity's Mecha Skill Nano Tranquilizer has some promise also. The first primary attack after reloading applies slow to a target, once every 17 seconds making enemies easier to burst down from multiple angles. And since you'll be reloading your weapons near constantly with Gorilla Hunter, you're sure to find value with this one over the course of a firefight. Hopefully Nutties implements more buff indicators like we have for Pulsar. Knowing when your slow is available seems pretty important. Ideally, each buff should have an indicator for any map. Magic Stones The stones I recommend for Gorilla Hunter are Air, Earth, Gravity, and Curse. Advanced Tactics your primary weapon is your main means of wearing down and zoning enemies. At a slightly lower fire rate and respectable 180 to 200 damage using professional tools, you can spam your primary's high clip capacity and fast reload liberally to wear down and discourage enemies from pushing you too early. With Lacerating Bolt, Gorilla's Crossbow deals a heavy 840 damage. 
Enough to break most any shields by itself. Any direct hit will severely wound the enemy, opening them up for the finishing blow. As mentioned earlier in the video, the recon bolt scans through walls. If you lose sight of the enemy, you can scan the area nearby. Useful for keeping track of the enemy movements and predicting their next move. This works very well for hunting pilots in buildings also. It's generally a lot easier to hit your shots if you have high ground on your opponents across your arsenal. Most important when trying to land those crucial secondary shots. Try to take the high ground or create it by jumping when necessary. Your clone is a versatile tool that can be used in various ways. You can create a stationary TP by putting your clone in timeout. From there, you can pop around the corner and deal damage, then instantly TP back for a quick getaway. If you have a high perch as a Yumi castle, you can set up your clone at the top and then drop down to hunt enemies. Even mechs such as Hurricane can have trouble clearing you with this tactic. Your clone is invulnerable to damage. This means two things. First, you can safely send it out to traverse dangerous open field to get from cover to cover. Secondly, your clone can be used to pass otherwise troublesome obstacles, such as zone, enemy fire, damaging AoEs, even bypassing the slow effect of water. If you don't see your clone cross gaps or behind cover, you can often set yourself for the perfect crossbow shot for devastating effect. All of your tactics with the clone ability are greatly expanded with Core 2. One very effective tactic with your clone is to send out your clone and begin firing at the enemy. TP away to avoid a heavy attack, and repeat once they begin firing at your new location. And if they start firing at your clone expecting you to teleport, maybe don't teleport sometimes. There's tons of outplay potential with this core module. I like to prevent enemies from recovering their shields and general HP when possible. I refer to this as wounding the enemy, putting them in a state in which they have HP to recover. As much as possible, you want to keep enemies in this state. With how fast your own shields recover, you can quickly turn the battle in your favor. Use your rifle when you think you'll have the chance to get multiple hits in. Use your crossbow for smaller openings or when you're sure you can land a shot. If you aren't worried too much about dealing damage and simply want to prevent shield regeneration, dodging every shotgun pellet is very difficult. This is why you'll often see me firing off the shotgun at long range during streams. The more shields a mech has, the more effective this tactic becomes. Gorilla has a strange behavior of losing momentum very quickly when landing. This makes it easier to begin running as soon as you hit the ground. You can spam jumps more quickly also, similar to Moon Rabbit. Even if you jump full speed onto a jump pad, you can move in the opposite direction at the last second to bounce backwards. This makes Gorilla very difficult to protect depending on the area. The classic technique of reload switching comes into play majorly with Gorilla. Originally a Kuma technique, you can begin reloading your weapon, then immediately switch to your other primary using the core button. Your weapon will continue to reload while holstered. For comparison, reload switching is relatively fast at less than 2 seconds, compared to the 5 seconds your shotgun needs to stay holstered to trigger auto-loading holster. You're locked out of many animations while cocking the shotgun, including demecking surprisingly. You can cancel this animation early by pulling out your crossbow. From there, you can fire off a recon bolt for a follow-up attack. Otherwise, you can cancel your secondary to return to firing state a little faster. This way you can increase your shotgun fire rate. Fire your shotgun, hold secondary, cancel, repeat. It takes some getting used to to get the timing down, but it can make the difference especially in mirror matches. Just like in pallet form, you move slower while firing or reloading. When finished firing, immediately switch primaries to return to normal speed. Combine this with reload switching to stay topped off in ammo on the fly. With a shotgun, you aren't able to begin reloading directly after firing, but you can still switch primaries to an otherwise uncancelable shotgun cocking. The shotgun capacity is pretty high, so you should have plenty of shots left to hold out until you can reload again. What I like to do pretty often is fire my primary until I'm almost forced to retreat. This is where I begin reloading and then quickly fire off my crossbow, teleporting instantly after the recon bolt is fired. I then switch primaries to return to normal speed and prepare for my next move. It sounds like a lot, but all of these techniques come naturally with time. Before you know it, you'll be chaining them almost seamlessly for a very engaging combat flow. If scouting a dangerous area, you can send the clone to a safe place for a quick getaway. You can then scout the area out yourself, teleporting back if in danger, or simply continue pressing on if the situation looks clear. Conversely, you can send out your clone to cover distance ahead while you clear or finish looting out the immediate area. Both tactics work super well when looting drops. To maximize the effectiveness of clones during combat, it's generally better to maximize distance between your clone and your real body. This way, enemies have a harder time keeping track of both gorillas in the heat of battle. 
Since you control when you teleport, you can usually gain the upper hand on opponents. You can also turn while teleporting to reduce aim correction post-teleport. This is a situational trick, but works hilariously well when it does. There will be some gaps that you just can't jump across normally. If you pop your clone while close to and above the ledge you want to reach, you can sometimes eat your clone onto ledges and then teleport to that location. Another interesting behavior of the clone is its ability to scale inclines at crazy angles. The most noticeable example of this are the slopes around Yumi Castle. You'll have to discover these locations yourself, but there are tons of spots around the map like this, allowing for some crazy rotations. Gorilla Hunter is very powerful, yet somewhat fragile at the same time. While he has great poking and continuous damage over time, it's the time spent in between teleports and his lack of vertical mobility that can leave him in sticky situations. Because of these downsides, Gorilla survives through controlling the flow of battle and positioning of players on both sides. Gorilla grows in strength the longer he's active on the battlefield. Like his name suggests, you don't want to take on the enemies head on in most cases. Ideally, you want to wear down the enemies before picking them off one by one. Once you're lower than 1600 HP, you can begin to burst down mechs if necessary. To get the best out of Gorilla, you really need him to pump out as much damage as safely possible. Zoning via damage is crucial due to Gorilla's relatively low mobility and lack of vertical mobility. Gorilla's ability to split off enemy attention makes him great as a control mech, along with his ability to suppress enemies with its rifle and crossbow. With a 20% damage nerf to our shotgun, it's more of a support tool than a DPS weapon. While Gorilla has some mobility potential, mobility is at best a subclass for this mech. This is due to the setup needed for his clones to be effective. Think of Gorilla as more of a mobile trio with too much suppression and control. Gorilla Hunter is a wild card in squads due to its ability to warp back and forth around the map, keeping the enemy on their toes and making them think twice before rushing in recklessly. Although the leader of a team may play this mech well due to its tactical and controller nature, Gorilla players need to spend a bulk of their focus on their own safety. Because of how active Gorilla's combat flow is, it's difficult to keep track of allies at the same time. One badly timed TP can be enough to end your career in an instant. Gorilla excels in debilitator and controller roles, weakening enemies and setting up their allies for success. Hot Steel, Trio, and Michael Mains will likely feel most at home with this mech due to its animation and cooldown management and wear-down potential. Gorilla Hunter is a breath of fresh air, giving players entirely new ways to take on fights. Don't look away, because Gorilla Hunter is right where he needs to be.